We have a, a particularly difficult problem of an exacerbation of a health disparity. We've known literally forever that diseases like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and asthma are disproportionately afflicting the minority populations, particularly the African Americans. Unfortunately, when you look at the predisposing conditions that lead to a bad outcome with coronavirus, the things that get people into ICUs that require intubation and often lead to death, they are just those very comorbidities that are unfortunately disproportionately prevalent in the African American population. As Governor Cuomo articulated today, uh, hospital admissions uh, continue to decline. Uh, and uh, in our report early this morning uh, from Dr. Burks, we continue to see evidence of stabilization uh, in some of the areas around the country of the most significant outbreak, the New York metro area, including New Jersey, Long Island, and Connecticut, New Orleans metro area, Detroit, Boston, Chicago, and, and Denver, uh, as Dr. Burks will explain, continue to uh, give evidence of stabilization. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem meaning in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel. Starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. <clears throat> And Israel consists of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. That may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, so this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, Habakkuk Wadash. And as you heard in that clip from Rotors, entitled uh, Dr. Uh, Fossey Disproportional Rate of Mortality Among African Americans, all right? So a few brothers have already reported uh, on this topic, how they're saying that the coronavirus is uh, taking out um, a lot of uh, jakes, all right? You, you so-called African Americans or you so-called uh, uh, Negroes, all right? You're Israelites, okay? And you are going to be the target of... Uh, a lot of these uh, plagues, all right, that's coming down. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and jump into the scriptures. I'm, I'm only going to grab a few precepts on this, Lord's will. All right, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30. And one thing I also want to highlight, just a quick point, is you can see that these things will can uh, lead, all right, to uh, the race riots that are prophesied in the scriptures, okay? Just like a, a prime example is just recently when... This whole information was coming out uh, on the coronavirus. Sorry, Esau Edom used his media. Okay, he showed you uh, a few months back. All right, he just showed you um, some uh, Chinese lady uh, eating a damn uh, bat. And and that was the cause of the coronavirus. All right. And that's what they pushed out on the media. And as a result of that being pushed out in the media, you had uh, different uh, hate crimes against uh, so-called Asians. All right. So-called Chinese people, Moabites. All right. They were um, experiencing racism. OK, to the point to where um, a lot of Asian Americans were going out and buying guns because of the threat. All right. That they felt from uh, different races. OK, because of the demonization of them. So if that happened just in a short time span against so-called Chinese people to where when they they're walking around. People are covering in their mouths. All right. They're being cursed out. Nobody wants to sit next to them. All right. <laughs> and so on and so forth. What do you think is going to happen to you so-called blacks, blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans? All right. You Israelites, when they start demonizing you more in the media and linking you as uh, uh, an issue with society as far as the spread of this virus, man. And there's going to be more demonization of you Israelites. All right. But this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, the scriptures refer to it as Jacob's trouble. All right. And Jacob, as you Israelites, once again, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So the target of uh, these various events is going to be you. All right. And we see clearly this is just the beginning of the 
uh, or I wouldn't even say the beginning, but you see clearly that you're being demonized even more in the media uh, with this happening. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and grab the book of uh, Second Ezra. <clears throat> Chapter, uh, I believe it's 16. Second Ezra chapter 16. And we'll start at verse. I'm going to start at verse 68. As a matter of fact, All right, it says, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. All right. And that's um, over you Israelites, man. Okay. It says, uh, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. All right. And that's going into those concentration camps. All right. Or so-called re-education camps. Now, here it is. You've got um, Esau putting out information saying that, all right, uh, we need to start going into these homes and separating these uh, family members that have the virus from out of their households. Because now the virus is off the streets and it's just within the homes because of these quarantines. This is the information that they're putting out there. So they're justifying coming into your cribs. But if you Israelites, all right, are the ones that are being pushed out on the mainstream as having the virus or the forefront of spreading the virus, okay, here in the Americas, okay, whose homes are they going to break into? They're going to break into your homes and they're going to quarantine you. And the rest of these nations are going to be okay with that. All right. So-called white. Oh, phew, shoo. All right. Great. Okay, yeah, haul them off. Get rid of them. Get them off the streets. They aren't paying. They aren't uh, taking heed to the quarantines as well, man. All right? They, uh, uh, anyways, should I say. All right, they don't listen. They're breaking all these rules. They're a threat to our safety. All right, these Edomites are going to uh, really feel threatened by you uh, Jakes. The more that they demonize you in the media. Now, prime example as a testimony, uh, over, this, uh, over this weekend, me and a few brothers across the other side of the line, all right, and this other Jake, all right, that um, um, uh, we were at the park and we were shooting a shooting some hoops. All right, and here in uh, Iowa, there there isn't a there isn't a complete shutdown. All right, they still allowed um, prior to uh, yesterday. They still all right, but they still uh, allowed certain uh, gatherings. Okay, so we were fine. You know, we're hooping. Okay, the the cops were rolling around. They didn't have an issue with us playing basketball, so on and so forth. Well, this Edomite, he came out and then he was like, hey, don't you know we're in the middle of a pandemic? All right. He had an issue with us playing ball. You know, we talked some shit. Ah, don't worry about it. We cool. You know, just brushed him off. We didn't think anything of it. Right. So the Edomite, he uh, he was upset. OK. And um, he went back in his house and then he came back out with a shotgun. Literally. All right. Over this past weekend, he came out with a shotgun. All right. Uh, to pretty much scare us, you know, like he was going to pretty much put in the notion like, all right, you're you're threatening, you're threatening uh, the well-being of American citizens. And this was his justification. All right, and we already know this. These devils already just hate us. But he came out with a shotgun as if he was going to uh, 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 as if he was going to shoot at us for playing basketball. And just to bring that out to show you that some of these uh, some of these Edomites are truly scared. And if they're pushing you out as the as the forefront of pushing out this virus, okay, they're going to um, they're going to retaliate. All right, they're going to act off of that fear. All right, just like uh, Esau with uh, these police, they say that they were afraid. All right, they feel like their life was threatened, and that justified them shooting um, these Jakes that had no weapons, that did that didn't do anything. They're already in handcuffs, but they feel like their life was threatened, and they put you to death. Well, this is going. This fear is going to come down down upon not just these police officers, but these everyday uh, Edomites, man. Okay. Now the spirit had it to where we got delivered. All right. As soon as he came out with the shotgun, all right, I threw up a prayer. Baba Kushai, Yah, Bashim, Yah, All right, get this Edomite out of here. And then um, I still wanted to be wise. All right, I wasn't gonna. Uh, I didn't through the spirit. You know, I didn't want to uh, allow brothers to be put in harm uh, over a, a basketball game. So even though I put up that prayer, I began to uh, just uh, grab grab the stuff, say, you know what? We'll just go to another park, man. And the spirit had it to where another Edomite, he came out. He he saw um, he was at the park and he saw him come out with the gun. He came up to us like, hey, did he just have a shotgun? All right. And then we were like, yeah, man. But, you know, it's no big deal. He called the cops right then. Right then the cops came around. Now, the Edomite went back in the crib. OK. And then he came out. I believe he saw the dude was about to call the cops. He came back out with a knife. 
all right because we were kind of lingering uh deciding if we were gonna leave or not you know and um he came back out with a knife then he went back in the crib and as we were beginning to leave the cops pulled up and when they pulled up they came out with with ak's all right like they like if he was there still outside with that shotgun hey the, the spirit could have had it to where they just blew him away right then you know and but but the spirit had it to where um the that was how the Lord got rid of that Edomite, all right? And and we ended up staying at that same park. He wasn't gonna do anything with those cops out there. Okay, but that was the spirit, man. Uh, um delivering us out of that. And that's just a testament just to show that. All right, the scripture is saying that let me grab one, and I and I wasn't even planning on going into uh this testimony. All right, but um it's all through the spirit. So let's grab this in the book of Psalms because that's just a small example so to speak. And I don't even want to downplay it like a small example. All right. Because the Lord delivering us out of anything, no matter the way that he does it, whether it's a cherry that comes out of the sky. All right. And delivers us in some way or whether he delivers us at the uh, by the hands of another Edomite. Those are still deliverances, man. All right. And they aren't small. All right. So the Wadi Yabba Shem Yabba Shai for getting us uh, out of that jam, man. OK, those prayers work, man. Calling upon the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai in times of trouble, man. This is truly a strong tower of defense, man. But this is Psalms chapter 17 and verse. Uh, so obvious. Uh, Psalms 19. I'm tripping. Or is it 17? Yeah, all right. Psalm 17 and verse um, 13. It says, Arise, O Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, disappoint him and cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Right. So that was an example of the Lord deliverance from the wicked, all right, whom the Lord is going to use to execute judgment, all right? That's the sword of the Lord, and he came out with a sword, all right? He literally came out with a shotgun, but then he went back out and grabbed a big-ass knife, okay? And once again, he used the guys, oh, it's a pandemic out here. But in reality, you could tell that he wasn't fearful of getting the virus. No, he just wanted an excuse to come mess with us, you know? And it was as a testimony to show that the Lord is going to deliver us, all right? And we didn't fear. OK, we didn't fear that he came out with, with a gun or anything like that, man. OK, we uh, we held our ground and made a decision uh, through the spirit. All right. And um, and everything played out how it played out, man. All right. But let me go back. And that's just to show you once again that, hey, these devils are going to be um, uh, targeting you, Jake's man. OK, this is second answers. But hey, the Lord is going to deliver his uh, uh, his men, his servants, man. All right. Through the spirit of power. Y'all about shimmy. I was shy. Hey, the spirit's been. Uh upon me all right thankfully to serve the lord and i believe that he's gonna uh fulfill his word that he said concerning his servants as far as protecting them and guiding them and even if the lord all right would have had it to where that that devil all right shot it off okay and 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 and, and took me or another brother out hey we would have been cool we would have been in peace all right and we would have came back and executed vengeance with new bodies man so it's a win-win for the elect all right that's why we don't fear the sentence of death okay it would have been a glorious thing for Yah Bashim Yahweh Shah to allow me to die in the faith, man. Or any other brother to die in the faith. So we don't have to fear any of these things, man. But this is the book of Second Ezra back uh, in 16 and verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. Right. Go, throwing you in those concentration camps. And they're going to be getting crazy in those camps, man. All right. It's going to be all types of... Uh, Wickedness happening, man. Verse 69, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. All right, so if you consent to taking the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, okay, these vaccines, they, they and so on and so forth, man, you want to resist unto death. And the Lord will raise up that standard, man. All right, it says, fight for the truth unto death and the Lord will fight for thee. So if you uh, continue to fight for Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai through the end, man, hey, the Lord may give you that power at the last second, all right, or deliver you in whatever form because you fought for the Lord even unto death, all right? And the Lord is going to fulfill his word, man. Verse 70, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, right? And that's you Israelites, a great insurrection, an uprising against you Jakes. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. So this is prophecy. And they're going to use different justifications to run up in you Jakes's uh, neighborhoods and your homes and 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 uh throw you in these concentration camps and straight up put you to death man it says then they shall it says then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire and how is it going to be known because the lord is going to provide divine intervention you're going to see clearly that these men have a stable mind they're taken care of and they are panicking while you are it's going to be clear like 
What do these men know? All right. Or why is it that these men are in their families are being protected, but I'm not? What is it about these men? Well, these men have been serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And now you're seeing the reward for serving the Lord and walking in the fear of him, man. So it's going to be made evident and clear in that day. For they shall, uh, uh, verse uh, 73 again, then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Hey, and so the Lord's going to deliver us, man. And just as that example was, he delivered us out of that jam. He's going to deliver us out of every other jam that we get in, man. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh about Shemi Awashai deliver us out of them all, man. And we have to stand upon these words, man. These are words that we're going to stand upon and not be moved at this devil, okay? We won't be afraid of evil tidings, as the scripture says, man. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, Yahweh power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So there you go, man. So the Lord, hey, we don't have anything to doubt or fear, man. All right, let me go ahead and grab this. The scripture says he's not giving us the spirit of fear. Now, not to say that your flesh won't try and rouse up, okay? Those uh, 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 thoughts of doubt will try and enter in, but the spirit, all right, the scripture says wisdom meets us in every thought. So if doubt creeps in, just knowing uh, uh, that a precept is going to come back as well, and you want to stand upon that precept, all right? The Lord hasn't given me the fear, spirit of fear. Whatever precept that the Lord gives you in your mind, all right, that you can stand upon and have faith in, all right, believe in that, man, all right? Let me go ahead and grab this. Uh, evil tidings. All right, this is the book of um, Psalms, chapter uh, 112 and verse. Man, I'm going to start at verse uh, five. It says, a good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Right. And the book of Soraka says that um, our sacrifices will be an everlasting memorial before the Lord. So the work that we put in, the Lord hasn't forgotten those things, man. And, and they're going to be brought, to, they're brought to his remembrance, of course. All right. Our sacrifices daily, but especially in these times that we come into, hey, the Lord is going to look out for us. I remember when you were fasting and praying for me, man, all that was not in vain. I'm going to deliver you. Right. It says he shall not be afraid of evil tidings, evil news, bad news. Right. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord, meaning that he's unmoved. Right. His mind is made up, trusting in Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, his heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. And the Lord is gonna have a heavy spirit upon us, man. All right, to be able to look these devils in the eye and resist unto death. Okay, no matter what they come with, he hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, and that's through this word, man. All right. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. We've done this through this work that we've been putting in, man. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. So these devils don't have no power over us, man. Hey, just like the best example that we could ever speak upon, man, Yahweh Shai. When he was in the face of Pilate, all right, he checked Pilate, man. Pilate was like, man, hey, don't you know I have the power of death right now? I can put you to death right now. It's in my hands. You know that devil being proud and boasting? Yahweh Shai cut him. He said, look, you don't have no power but what's been given unto you from the heavenly father. All right. Pretty much you can't do nothing unto me unless the heavenly father allows you to do it. A sparrow can't even fall from heaven unless the heavenly father allows it, man. So how much more us his servants, right? So nothing can happen unto us unless the Lord ordains it. So you have a shy check them, man. He says, so therefore greater is he that have delivered me unto you, man. Or, or so like a greater sin uh, um, is it for him that have delivered me unto you. All right, with the intent to put him to death. So we ain't got nothing to worry about, man. All right. But hey, you see clearly, man, Jacob's trouble is not at hand. And a lot of these Jakes aren't going to be defended because they haven't repented from their iniquities, man. So, hey, we at the door and the Lord is going to uh, protect us, man. Having that being said, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.